In this chapter, we'll look at pop-ups and how to interact with them. We'll look at three different types of pop-ups, alerts, file uploads, and then also modals. To get started, we'll click on this JavaScript alerts, and we're gonna write a test that clicks on this button, click for JS alert. And let's just go ahead and inspect this so I can show you something. So we have this button here, right? This will make a call to a JavaScript function, which will then show an alert. So when we click on this button, notice here that we have a pop-up. This is the JavaScript alert, and it says, I am a JS alert. Let's look for this in the DOM. And we see here that there are no matches found. That's because this alert is not attached to the DOM. So we have to use a special way in order to interact with this alert. We'll do that in our test. We'll go ahead and click on this OK button. And we notice here that we get a result. We can assert on this result. And we'll write similar tests for the other buttons as well. Let's get started. So in our home page, I've already created a method to click on the JavaScript's alerts link from that home page, and this will return an alerts page object. I have this class already created, alerts page, and I've already created our web driver for us as well as our constructor. So let's go ahead and create the element for the first button. We see that we don't have an ID or any other identifier. The only attribute here is the on click and it's pointing to a function name. But that doesn't really feel like a safe one because this function name could change. So let's go ahead with the text of the button. And we can write an X path for this. Let's say find the button that has the text, which equals click for JS alert. And great, we see that we found one element and it's this one, perfect. So we'll go ahead and create a new by, which searches by XPath. I was going to call this alert button, but that seems a bit confusing because later on when we look at this, we might think that it's a button that's actually on the alert. So let's be very clear in our naming and call this trigger alert button. Okay, let's go ahead and create a method to click that button. So we can do the normal way of driver.findElement. So this is just the button itself. We put in that button and say click. Now, once we've clicked this, we know that we're going to get an alert. So let's create a method to click the okay on that alert button. Now again, we can't use driver.findElement to interact with the alert because it's not a web element. What we're gonna to need to do is say driver and use this switch to method. The switch to method will switch from the current context of the DOM to something else. So we say switch to, and then we see some more options that we can switch to, one being an alert. And we see that the alert method will return an alert object. So let's go ahead and call that. Now we have this alert object and we can say dot, and we see multiple options here, such as accept, dismiss, get text, and send keys. In this case, we want to accept, so we go ahead and call that. Now let's create our test. So we go over to the test section, let's make a new package, and we'll call this package alerts, and we'll make a new test here and we'll call this test alert test. This will extend from the base test class and we'll go ahead and create a new test method. So we'll call this test except alert. And we can do a home page dot click JavaScript alerts, which gives us the alerts page. So we can go ahead and assign that to a new variable. And then from the alerts page, we can say trigger the alert. And then we can say accept the alert. Now, in order to test this, remember that we have this resulting text here. So let's go ahead and add this to our page class. And then looking at this message, I see a little typo on this word. So any of us, I can do it or you can do it. One of us could go and update this project, the internet project, 
on GitHub to correct this message. And since we're going to add this to our test, then that test will then begin to fail at that point. And I'm glad that this came up because this is something that happens very often in UI automation. It can happen in any type of automation, but it's really common in UI automation. It's because the development of our application is ongoing. Things are going to change. And so our tests are going to need to be updated when they fail because of things like this. So if the application changes in a way that we want it to change, but yet we wrote our test against the application at a certain point, then there's gonna be some delta there that we have to deal with. And sometimes that's going to be an indicator that there's something that was broken in the application itself, and that is what needs to be fixed. And then sometimes it's going to be because the test is written against an outdated version of the application, and therefore the test needs to be updated. So just keep this in mind. This is something that comes with test automation. There's no need to think about your test as being flaky or fragile because of this. It's just the nature of the beast. Okay, we have an ID here. So let's just go ahead and copy this and add this to our framework. So in our alerts page, let's go ahead and create another by. We'll call this one results. And this one is by ID. And we pass that ID in. And now we create a method to get the result text. Okay, so back to our test, let's go ahead and we're going to say alerts page dot get result. And we want to compare this result with the string. So we're going to do assert equals. And this is the actual result and then the expected result. Let's go ahead and copy that. And then we'll give it a message. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. Wonderful, that worked. So let's go ahead and create some more tests for the other types of alerts. So for our next test, let's go ahead and click on this JS confirm. Let's verify that this text says I am a JS confirm. And then this time we're going to click this cancel button instead of the okay. Let's write this. So back in the alerts page, we're going to make another button, this time for the confirm. So we change this from alert to confirm button and also change this to confirm. And then we can create method to trigger confirm. And we're gonna to need to create another method Instead of accepting the alert, we want to go ahead and click on that cancel button. Now, this is getting a little bit confusing for me to look at. And I'm thinking ahead as I write more and more tests. So this accept alert, what does that really mean? I want to now preface these methods. So I'm gonna actually rename this method. Let's do a refactor and rename. And instead of saying accept alert, I want to preface all of these with alert and then do something like click to accept. And that way it's really clear if I'm interacting with the page or if I'm interacting with the alert itself. Okay, I'm gonna do a same type of pattern here. I'm gonna say click to dismiss. And the dismiss, actually does the negative button. So if we say driver dot switch to dot alert, we have this dismiss option. And the dismiss option is going to click on this cancel button for us. But remember, before we click cancel, we also want to be able to get this text. So let's add a method for that too. So we'll go ahead and say public, and we're gonna to wanna to return the string, which is that text. We're still dealing with the alert, so let's make that prefix, and we can say get text. And same thing, we'll say driver dot switch to dot alert dot get text. And we want to return this. Okay, now we're ready to write a new test for this one. So let's go to our alert test and we'll create a new test in here. 
and this will be public void test get text from alert so let's go ahead and create an object for the alerts page and we'll get that by clicking on the click javascript alerts and this time we want to see the trigger the confirm and we want to get the text so let's go ahead and store that text inside of a variable so we'll say alerts page dot get text and now that we have the text we can go ahead and dismiss that alert once we've dismissed it let's go ahead and do the assertion for this text All right, so let's run this one. Great. Okay, let's write one more test for the prompt. So we wanna click this prompt button and then we want to enter something here, maybe TAU rocks and click okay. And then we can get this result and verify it. So let's go back to our framework and we're going to add a method to click this button as well as a method to enter text into this field. So we're making another by for the prompt. And then let's make the method to trigger that. Okay, and we have the alert methods here. Let's add one more to enter the text. So we'll say public void, we prefix it with alert, and say set input and we'll allow them to pass us some text and then we will do a driver dot switch to alert and send keys and then enter that text all right let's go ahead and create the test for this Okay, let's run this one. Okay, that failed. Let's see why. It says that it's expecting TAU rocks, but the actual was you entered TAU rocks, of course. So we can update this. So right here, we'll just put this first. and then append on our text. Let's run it again. Great, so that time it passed, wonderful. So great, now you see how to deal with JavaScript alerts. Now this is our first time creating multiple tests within one class. If I were to run this entire class, this would fail. Because each one of these are trying to click on the JavaScript's alert link, assuming that we are on the home page. We are not on the home page when we're done with these tests. So these tests are leaving the application in a bad state. What we could do is we could do something like in our base test to say, before any method runs, make sure that it's actually on the home page. Let's go ahead and do that. So before class, we launch this, but let's say before any method, then we're going to go home. And then there we simply just make this same call. So let's move this here and we'll say go home here. All right. And now let's just run the entire class and make sure that this actually works. Beautiful.